Well, thank you for being here today. Go ahead and open up your bulletins and we'll look at the announcements for today. Uh, first of all, if you have an attendance card, go ahead and fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as it goes by as a record of your attendance. Uh, also, life groups meet at 945 uh, every Sunday morning. We just get together for a little coffee and fellowship. Uh, we'll meet one more Sunday, and then the month of December, we will not meet regular uh, life groups, but we'll have the leaders back in the media room uh, for that Sunday, uh, that month of December. So mark that and uh, be sure to... Uh, notate that. Uh, workers Appreciation Dinner is tonight. So if you have worked here in the church or if you're interested in working this next coming year, uh, go ahead and come tonight and we'll have a little bit of food and we'll talk about this coming year and the, uh, the ministries that we like to uh, introduce. Uh, Thanksgiving Communion Service will be this Tuesday night, November the 22nd at 7 uh, p.m. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night service this coming week because of Thanksgiving. So if you're traveling out, we pray that you have good travels and uh, uh, we will see you the next coming Sunday. But we will not have Wednesday night service. Potluck will be coming on November the 27th and everyone is welcome. You're welcome to bring your leftovers from Thanksgiving. I will happily eat some of your turkey. So uh, go ahead and come on out on November the 27th. Uh, on the back of your announcements, on the back of the bulletin, there is a little uh, box down there for some service opportunities. If you'd like to look at that, uh, there's some things that you're welcome to try and do. Uh, lastly, there's a Christmas party that's going on at the Dunbar's house. They do it every year. Uh, they didn't do it last year, I don't believe. So we, oh, you did. Okay, well, well, they're going to do it this year, okay? Uh, so if you're interested in going to that, go ahead and sign up out there in the shadow box. If there's 50 or more people, we'll do it here at the church. If there's not, we'll do it at their house. So uh, be sure to sign up so we have an accurate count of how many people will be attending. Uh, also, Carolyn Wolchie gave me a card and Wendell Pohl gave me a card, so I'll read those real quick. Uh, just to thank the Lighthouse family, it says, Church family, thank you so much uh, for the concern, prayers, and food and flowers during the loss of our sister, brother-in-law, sister and brother-in-law. Uh, we could feel the love of God wrapped around us during this very difficult time. Uh, that's from Sam and Carolyn Wolchie. And then Wendell said, Dear Lighthouse family, I appreciate all the prayers that have been brought for before the Lord on my behalf. There are so many in our church that pray for, uh, for me. I also wish to thank those who have taken the time to call, send cards, and stop by for a visit. They have been an encouragement to me, and for this I am very grateful. God bless you all. Wendell Pohl. So I'd just like to say thank you as a family uh, for taking care of each other. So Dan, go ahead and come and lead us in another song. You would stand once again, page 786 in the hymns if you need it. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Okay, you may be seated. I'm going to ask Mrs. Jan Wright to play a special for us at this time. Okay. Yeah. You know, I know we're all looking forward to Thanksgiving this Thursday, and it's a good time for us just to reflect back, you know, over this past year and, and how the Lord has so blessed each one of us. I mean, we can all think of the wonderful blessings He's given us and the good times and, and all that He's uh, how He supplied our needs and taken care of us. And then, and you know, the Bible says uh, that He every good and perfect gift. Sometimes when we forget about those good things, we take them for granted that uh, they all come from Him. And, and then there's hard times that each of us have gone through, and, and uh, I know some of you have really gone through some some dark times and are still going through them right now. And, but you know, if we're saved, right, um, we can still see blessings through those times. How He He just never leaves us. He's always there as we walk through those times gives us the peace and, and the comfort and the help and the joy if we keep our eyes on him. So anyway, today I'm going to play a piece that maybe is not as familiar. It's called Now Thank We All Are God. And um, it's on page 788 if you want to look it up. But, you know, I just thought it might be a time that we really reflect back and we're just next year. <coughs>
turn to Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to continue through the Hall of Faith, talking about an important person this morning in the history of the Bible is Moses and his story of faith. So it's uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and we will read verses 23 through 29, and then we'll sing one more short chorus, and we'll have the pastor come here in just a, about a minute, a minute and a half or so. Hebrews chapter 11, <clears throat> excuse me, start at verse 23, and we will read through verse 29. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season." esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And in verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying to do, were drowned. Just before the pastor comes this morning, page 513, if you need the hymnal. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Sings that twice this morning, and then we'll have the pastor come. Thank Good morning to you. How are y'all doing? All one, two, three? Good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, I turn into a TV preacher, aren't I? It's, everything is good, you know. <laughs> well, uh, listen, um, I do want to say thank you to a number of you folks out there. Thank you for those who were able to help with the uh, funeral yesterday for Joe Scraper. Uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, a week ago today, we were uh, concerned about him and uh, saw the ambulance over there and everything. And uh, this week, we uh, understand that he was in heaven and uh, doing just fine. So uh, it's been a real privilege to be able to get to know his uh, kids. I uh, got to meet them and uh, find out a little more about Joe than I ever knew. And uh, so it was a real treasure to be able to do that. And I appreciate uh, you all supporting Joe, and uh, many of you befriended him, and uh, it was uh, very special. But uh, got to know him as a father this week. He had six kids uh, and uh, took care of all of them. At, at a certain time in his life, he took care of all of them by himself. Uh, I think four girls and two boys, and uh, just did a... They love him so much, and uh, during that time of raising the, uh, the boys and the girls, he made sure they had clothes and taught them and, and uh, for clothes for uh, school and just took care of all their needs. And uh, many of them, it, was, uh, it became a tradition for them to give him a card on Mother's Day as well as on Father's Day uh, since he had both roles. And I just thought that was so sweet. And uh, just his kids are just wonderful. So uh, anyway, we had uh, after the funeral in uh, Lawrence, we went to the gravesite here at Oakwood. And then, of course, after that, uh, we all came back here and uh, just uh, had a wonderful time of fellowship. Uh, fried chicken, uh, funeral fried chicken is the best. Uh, it is. And then you have that shaved ham and uh, then all of the, the family and uh, the pictures. And it just turns out to be a real blessing. I'll tell you, it turns out to be a blessing for the family. It gives them a chance to... Uh, decompress a little bit and to remember how good God had been to them and uh, just looking at all the pictures and the, the wonder of it all. So it was good and uh, we know that um, and one of the things I appreciate too is that over the last few years uh, Joe uh, made it clear to his family that he was ready and uh, whenever God called him he was ready 
uh, spiritually and physically, he was ready. And so they're happy for him and uh, just a lot of good memories in the, that old house down there on the corner. So, uh, but be praying for the, the family. I think that they would appreciate that. And um, I do want to make an announcement that after services today, I think we're going to pick up Christmas boxes. Is that today? Okay. And we're going to back up some stuff and we're going to bring them out. So if you want to be a part of that and uh, be ready to load those things up into some trucks and stuff, uh, you stick around and we'll uh, do that. And who else taking the, the uh, boxes? Jennifer and Amy. Okay. Very good. God bless you for doing that again this year. I know you guys have had a lot on your plate uh, to try to do that as well. Thank you all for whoever took those uh, boxes and filled them up and ready to go. So we're ready to ship them off to the kids. And we uh, hope and pray that they uh, accept Jesus Christ and, and enjoy a good Christmas as well. So had a busy week this week. I don't know if you noticed on it when you pull out of the parking lot over there, look at our uh, picnic shelter. It is no longer a picnic shelter. Uh, it is turning into a garage, and uh, so it's uh, all got walls all the way around it. Going to put a garage door in after the, the Thanksgiving, and uh, appreciate all the guys who uh, participated in that and uh, slapping that thing together. So I uh, had a busy week, but it's been a, a good week as well. All right, uh, turn your Bibles to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. I uh, do welcome the church at uh, Bible Baptist in Bonner Springs. Had a, a good time with them this week. We preached there on Tuesday night and uh, kind of got back in touch with them. Uh, it was election night when I heard my phone go ding. And I looked down on the Tuesday night. I'm, I'm looking at Donald Trump in Florida and I'm kind of looking at this and I get the ding. I look down and it says, uh, did you forget about us? And it was the message from Bonner Springs. I was supposed to preach in Bonner that night. And so I am just apologizing. I did end up blaming it on Donald Trump. But other than that, uh, but I apologize. So last Tuesday, I made it up and we went down there and preached to them and had a good time. But uh, we welcome them as well. They, they watch our services as well. So uh, God bless uh, the church in Bonner Springs. You be praying for them. They have a a man that's coming to candidate uh, to be their pastor. Uh, but until then, it's a real privilege to have them with us in our services too. All right, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, what's that? Oh, and this is a special day too because we have Opal uh, back with us. And uh, what a long journey that's been. There she is, all right. God bless you, amen. Good to have you back. All right. This has been a long journey because when she ended, when she does something, she does it to the fullest extent. And uh, she broke her uh, ankle in many places. And uh, so it's been a long journey coming back. Uh, but she was so excited to be, back, be able to be back in church. So you give her a hug today and tell her it's good to have Opal back with us today. Amen. So uh, God bless you. And I think on December, is it December 1st? She's going back home, uh, for real. And you're not ready to go back home, are you? Oh, you're ready. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you're ready, too, I tell you. She's doing really good. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. We've been learning uh, about whenever uh, someone says Hebrews chapter 11, I want you to think of this is the faith chapter. This is the hall of fame, the hall of faith. Uh, it is the, the chapter that teaches us what faith is, starting in verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Actually, that may be chapter, verse 2. I can't remember. But anyway, right there at the beginning. Is it the 1? Okay. Like I said, verse number 1, it teaches us what is faith. And uh, so we uh, began to learn that faith is the substance of things hoped for, such as we, uh, the things we hope for is the existence of God. I've never seen him, but I believe by faith that he's there. It is the existence, uh, it is the substance of things hoped for. We believe it, that there is a God, that he has a plan, and we believe in the word of God, right? We believe by faith those things. Those are the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
I've never seen God. I've, he's never told me his plan. And he didn't tell me that he wrote the word of God. But I believe all of those things by faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, but we believe about it anyway. And uh, that's the way that God loves it. He loves to us, uh, approach us. Uh, he loves us to approach him by faith. He is the Savior. He is the God. We surrender our heart, our life to him. We, we surrender to his plan. Not my will be done, but thine, O God. And so we uh, pray that uh, uh, by faith uh, in him. And so we've been learning about that. We've learned that Hebrews 11 is a scripture that not only teaches us what faith is, but it is also a chapter in the Bible that gives us lots of illustrations throughout the Word of God, characters and examples who found success in God through their faith. And so it gives us a number of different illustrations. Who did we start with last week? Abraham. Abraham, when you think of Abraham, really you think of his faith. Uh, he, he is the uh, patriarch of this idea of approaching God by faith. And so uh, we talked about Abraham last week, that when he was told to do something, he did it. He obeyed. Along with faith, when we're understanding faith in its totality, we understand that faith requires us to obey. And so he said, Abraham, I want to make you a great nation. Sure, you're 75. I'm going to make a great nation of you, but I need you to get up. And I need you to start heading out into the desert. Well, where do I go? What's the address? How do I punch this in on my GPS? Uh, no, I'm not giving you none of that. Just start going. The Bible says he started to go and he believed. And so obedience and faith really go hand in hand. And so he started to go. And guess what? God looked at that and he said, God says this about Abraham. Because he believed him and he left, he, God, accounted that to his to Abraham's uh, life, he, he accounted that for righteousness. God smiled and he says, he's doing it. Look at him. He's going. He has no idea. He's disoriented. He has no idea which way he's going. He is just going until I tell him to stop, until I tell him you've arrived, he's going. Faith requires us to obey whether or not we understand or not. We'll touch on that a little bit more today. Secondly, we learn from Abraham's life that... Um, uh, that faith uh, requires you to believe in promises when there's no corroborating evidence to associate that. What else did uh, Abraham believe in? I'm going to make a nation of you. Not only am I going to give you a land that you're walking to, and I'll tell you when you're there, but I'm going to make a nation of you. You think 75, you're too old to have a child? Hey, just believe. And the Bible says that he believed, and it was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed he would have a child. Did he have the child? We talked about that last week. No, uh, not at first, not in the first decade, not in the second decade. After two decades, he said, hey, I thought, you know, I'm almost 100 now. When's the child coming? Is it still possible? But in his heart, he still believed. And so we find that uh, because of that, uh, he was successful in faith and God blessed him because of that. And so uh, it was beautiful and it was wonderful. And there was no corroborating evidence to believe in a promise, but he just continued to believe it. And God loves it. And he loved Abraham because of that. He loves you when he gives you a promise. He loves you when you, he tells you what to do and you obey. He loves it. Look at him obeying. I, I haven't given him any indication that they're going to get out of this problem or get through this, but they just believe by faith. And therefore it is... Uh, a blessing. Let's learn some more things about faith. You know, uh, in verse number one, uh, in, in the first verse on Moses, that's verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now we're going to park on that for just a little bit. And we're going to find out that uh, first and foremost, we're going to learn another thing about faith. And that is his faith many times will cost you and cost you dearly. It will cost you something to believe by faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow for prayer today and I'm excited to uh, be able to preach about faith. Uh, I'm not so excited to live by faith. It's, it's sometimes very difficult, um, but this is the truth. The truth is, Father, that uh, by faith, you call us to believe in you 
by faith, as we live by faith, sometimes it will cost us something. And so, Father, help us to understand the totality of what this world means when we live in the world of faith in you. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless us and guide us and direct us and help us to grow in faith and help us to understand that this is part of it and help us to embrace it and help us just to continue to believe in you. And Father, I pray that we would continue this belief system until we die. And so thank you, Lord, for the blessings of, of faith, but help us to also realize, Father, today that it is a blessing to realize that we can lay it all on the line for you as well, and it's still worth it. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. I do pray that Moses teaches us a little something about faith today. And that is, is that when he came to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, I need not, probably for most of us, to explain any part of what we're talking about when he says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Because most of us have either read the story of Moses being head, uh, hidden in the bulrushes and um, the, his sister was looking afar off and uh, little baby Moses was uh, supposed to die in the, because they were all supposed to be killed. The babies were. Pharaoh made this edict because the Jewish people were uh, growing too large in their, in their capacity as slaves. They became so large that he was afraid that if an, if a, an enemy country would come in and attack, and the Jewish people would join with that army that the Egyptians would be uh, in peril, uh, in danger of falling as well. So he said, I, we got to thin out the crowd here. So any mother that gives birth to a baby and it's a little boy, that baby needs to be killed so that they get control of the population. And so uh, we find that uh, Moses' mother, by the way, by faith, Moses' mother, uh, hid her baby in the bulrushes uh, out. And he, she did throw him in the river, but he was in a little baby boat. And uh, so, and he survived. And Pharaoh's daughter, of course, found. You've probably either read Exodus or at the very least, you've seen Charlton Heston uh, in that famous uh, movie, uh, Moses. Uh, Moses, you know, uh, we've seen that. Uh, so you know what we're talking about when he says that uh, eventually Moses came to an age where he refused to be called the daughter of Pharaoh. And so uh, he turned from an Egyptian heritage uh, and he, he adopted or embraced a Hebrew heritage because he knew that he came from Hebrew parents anyway. Uh, Moses was probably the only one in all of Egypt that had this opportunity, uh, very few, if if any, other than Moses, had the chance to choose. Do I choose an Egyptian heritage or do I choose a Hebrew heritage? And so uh, he had to choose his heritage. He had to choose his lifestyle. He had to choose his acceptance level. If only he would just do the things the way the Egyptians did them and just fall in line. If only he would worship the gods that the Egyptians worshipped. If only he would just go with the flow, uh, he could have a much easier and much better life. But he had to choose Egyptian or Hebrew. And so as we know the story, Moses believed by faith and he gave up all of his Egyptian heritage to take on the life of a slave. He went from having a heritage uh, of, uh, of power to poverty. He went from having a, a, a heritage of uh, power uh, to poverty. He went from uh, being accepted to being uh, tried to be killed. Uh, he went from a lifestyle of uh, opulence in the, in the palace to running in the wilderness. So he, his choice, by faith, he made the choice, right? It cost him something uh, when he did that. And he gave it all up. He gave it up so that he would have God, the Hebrew God. He gave it up so that he could become part of the Hebrew children, the children of God. And so uh, it cost him something. Listen, when you and I place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, which is a, a common message that we preach all the time, full disclosure that when you place your faith and trust in God, it costs you something. You give up something. And if you like to write down a verse that describes what it, get, it costs you, it costs you your life because you're actually giving up your life. One of our favorite verses that we use that describes this is 1 Corinthians 6. 
And you should, it would do you well to meditate on 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 19 and 20. Because when you ask Christ to come into your heart and your life, yes, he forgives you. Yes, he gives you eternal life. But you, in turn, by doing this, are then giving your life to Christ. What, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, what, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? What? This isn't mine anymore? Nope. God, the Holy Spirit, is now dwelling inside of it. And when he, possession is nine-tenths of the law. Uh, well, no. Uh, anyway, he's living inside of you, and it's his temple now. What? Know ye not? And ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It belongs to him now. Oh, hold it now. I didn't understand that that's what was going on. I just want to have eternal life. I, I just want to go to be with God. Listen, uh, the full package is, is that by faith you trust in him to save you, is that now you belong to him. You are his child. And so the songwriter who wrote the song, wherever I'll go, wherever he goes, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so. Wherever he leads, I'll go. See, this is the understanding that now I belong to him and I will follow him. I am his child. Faith is costly. And Moses' life illustrates that and teaches us that. Secondly, sometimes faith, acting on faith in your life, believing by faith in the promises of God and, uh, and uh, giving your life to him, sometimes it can be painful even. There are some aspects of it that can cause pain. Would you join me in verse number 25? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. I'm choosing to... This is the most insane decision anyone could ever make uh, if you look at it just from a topical short-term vantage point. But that's what he chose. From the palace to poverty, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Look at verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And so by choosing to abandon the Egyptian life, he adheres to the suffering and affliction of God's people. Now, usually we preach a message and we say, to choose to sin is to choose to suffer. And I like James McDonald says that all the time, and I, I think that's a pretty good statement. To choose to sin is to choose to suffer. But the truth of the matter is sometimes to choose to have faith means you're choosing to suffer as well. And we need to be able to embrace that and say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Listen, if all, if all God is gathering together are children who believe in him by faith, but they're not willing to do it, if they're not willing to suffer, then you're really not committed to him anyway. We need to be willing to give it all for him, whether or not it's to take my life. If by taking my life, it does something for the glory of God and it accomplishes his will, we should be willing to give our life for it. That's the kind of child that we need to be. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. I'm willing to give it all on the altar. And so that's what we need to be able to do. So we should count the cost and uh, be able to realize sometimes it calls us to suffer. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, hey, how do I become a follower of you? He says, take up your cross and follow me. And that is an indicator that says, be willing to give everything for me. And sometimes even uh, the cross. So take up your cross and follow me. Faith can be costly as well. Faith can be painful as well. And so number three, faith always leads to rewards in the end. And see, this is why there, it's not insanity, the decision that he made. It's because it always, faith always leads to rewards in the end. Moses was faced with two extreme situations, either the reproach of Christ or the treasures of Egypt. Look what it, in verse 26, that's what it says. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So when we unpack these two decisions, okay, either the uh, reproach of Christ or the treasures 
in Egypt, you look at those two, it looks like on the, on the surface, man, it'd be very tempting to take the, uh, the treasures of Egypt rather than the reproach of Christ. By the way, it's very interesting that the author of Hebrews mentions a New Testament figure of Jesus Christ in an Old Testament passage. Uh, I read a couple of articles on this, and uh, I, I like the idea of this. And they're not 100% sure why Christ was mentioned on here. Here's a couple of uh, possibilities. Uh, this either means that he was willing to bear the reproaches that come with his belief that the Messiah would come. The Hebrew people, that's part of the foundation of who the Hebrews were back in those days, they were looking forward to a Christ coming, and they suffered reproach because that is their belief system. Uh, and that he um, gave up his fair prospects in Egypt uh, for the expectation of a Messiah or entering into Hebrew-like faith, or uh, mentioning Christ means he endured such reproaches as Christ suffered. In the same way that Christ suffered reproaches, uh, Moses chose to suffer those as well. So esteeming the reproach of Christ or the reproaches like Christ would suffer or reproach of believing in a Messiah, he uh, thought of that as a greater riches or a greater reward than the treasures in Egypt. He had recompense unto the, uh, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So we know that this uh, means that uh, the choice he made of choosing the Hebrew nation, that it was, uh, they were unpopular, uh, that they were hated, that they were ridiculed, that they were punished, uh, but um, that's part of the cost of having faith. You know, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, take up your cross and follow me. But here's another passage that's very interesting. It's found in John chapter uh, 15 and verse number 18. He says, actually, the world is going to hate you. If you have faith in me, you give your life to me, uh, they're not going to understand where you're coming from. Uh, and they're not going to like it. They're going to say that you're judgmental, uh, even if you're not judgmental. Uh, they're, they're going to uh, denigrate your faith. Say, why in the world would you believe in something like that? What's faith all about? I only believe in what I can see. He says, if the world hated me, it's going to hate you. Look what it says, John 15, 18. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So he told his disciples, and he meant it for you and I. Does that mean that all of our neighbors hate us? Not necessarily, but uh, certainly in the world that we live in today, there is a, there is a group of people that look on us uh, with no patience any longer. As a matter of fact, they, and this group is growing, and uh, they hate us. And uh, in, in the world that we live in, uh, we're probably the luckiest of all Christians in the world uh, because uh, we have laws that keep uh, those from uh, hating us too much. But um, needless to say, in the world, sometimes it, it costs us. So as we unpack this, uh, this idea, what a decision to make uh, between the uh, reproach of Christ or the treasures in Egypt. And any sane person, if you just looked at it quickly, would just choose the treasures and the opulence and the prestige and the power of the Egyptians. It's hard to go against the, the flow. I mean, it's hard to be hated like that, but that's not what he chose. Moses wisely did an interesting thing when making this decision. He took a couple steps back, uh, and that's what we need to do as well, but he took a few steps back, and he looked at the totality of the whole enchilada, if you will. And uh, he, uh, he did see the comfort and the acceptance and the pleasure and the power that he, the Egyptians were offering. Uh, but those Hebrews, he looked at them as well. And it seemed like they were serving a real God. And it seems like their songs that they would sing were sung to a real God. The prayers that they would pray for freedom were prayed to a real God. And that they would speak uh, uh, how that they were talking about that they would live with him in eternity. This eternal life with God seemed to be true. And if that is a true God, and if what they pray for is true as well, their eternal life is true, and I look at the eternal aspect of it, then that's the better choice for me, even though in the short term 
it means some bad things, but in the long term, totally worth it, if that is true. And so uh, he realized that even though the treasures of Egypt were way better, they were temporary. Do you see what it says in verse 25? It says, uh, part of his decision on this, he refused to be called uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25 says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. When he stepped back, he looked at it and he says, yes, it's way better, but it's temporary. It's not something that will last forever and ever and ever. And so because of its temporal nature, and then he also stepped back and he's, he made the decision based on the respect, what it says in verse 26, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He looked at the eternal reward that was coming, even though initially it was, it was going to be bad, but eventually it was going to be much better. And so by faith, he stepped out and uh, he believed by faith. And that's what we need to do as well. Listen, one of the biggest problems in our world today is short-sightedness. Is not looking at where is this pathway eventually going to lead me. And sure, it feels good in the temporary to be uh, filled with anger and to let everybody know how you feel. But where's that going to lead? Sure, it feels good to... Uh, give way to every lust that comes. I mean, I want to eat a hundred uh, ho-hos and I, wanna, I want to uh, eat all of the snicker bars that the teenagers gave me. By the way, I still have three left. Sure, did I, all want, did I want to eat them all before I got home, before Tucker got some of them? Yes, I did. But where does that pathway lead? It's not to good stuff, I'm telling you. The biggest problem with young people, the greatest thing that your parents could ever give you is the understanding and the wisdom to look at the long term. Where is this going? Look, take a few steps back. Get away from the drama of the here and now and say, where is this thing going to lead? It's one of the greatest things you can do. And when you look at what God has to offer and you look at what the world has to offer, you too will do what Moses did and you'll choose to live by faith. Because the eternal dividends, if these crazy Christians who sing to the Lord and pray to the Lord and serve the Lord and uh, look forward to dying so that they could be with the Lord forever, if this indeed is true and their faith is real, what they have to offer is way better. Even if they're not rich and, and uh, the most popular people in the world, the eternal reward is great. And by the way, I've seen where the world uh, drops off the... the uh, uh, the people who go after it. Many times uh, uh, the world drops off these people who give their all to the world and they are left destitute and they are left with nothing. And really that's where uh, it leads. It leads to nothing. It leads to futility. Agnosticism leads to futility. Uh, you are nothing but a blink of an eye and so there is no reason for existence. That's where, where atheism leads is when you're on your deathbed, well, I've had my day in the sun and so I'm done. And it does no good. And by the way, we're all going to burn up. The sun's going to uh, extinguish one day. And this is all going to be for nothing. Vanity of vanities. That's where that uh, type of thought leads to. And by the way, I don't believe by faith in God simply because the end is better. I believe by faith in God because of what he has given to me. I realize it is truth, and he is there, and I can believe in him. And it's, it is a no-brainer for me. I'm going to believe by faith in, in Jesus Christ because everything else, uh, whether or not it's a living, living large, you know, you only go, get through life once, uh, so I'm going to live for the gusto. The more gusto you live for, the worse off you're going to be. Really, it leads to death and destruction. You're going to lose it all anyway. It's like having all that sand from the beach in your hands and uh, try to walk around for a week and try to keep the sand on your hands. Uh, you, and little by little, you're going to start losing it. Ah, I lost some more. I lost some more. And eventually, as the week goes by and the two weeks go by, uh, you're going to be lucky to have one granule left. And that's what the world has to offer. It's something that is fleeting. It's temporary. And you can't keep it even if you try to keep it. You're not going to be able to take it with you when you die. Death is the thing that death and taxes, they say, is the unavoidable uh, things in life. And uh, one day it'll come and it'll, it will rip it away from you. And you, it will be ripped away anyway. 
And so we have to understand that faith, the nice thing about faith, does it cost? Yes. Does it lead to pain sometimes short term? Yes, it does. Uh, but the nice thing is faith always in the end leads to reward. There is a reward at the end of that. And so we understand that that's, that's the thing that uh, motivated Moses to make the right decision. So we're still talking about Moses. Well, I don't even know which Pharaoh it was that was uh, alive during Egypt. Uh, Egypt isn't that powerful now anymore either. They're not even uh, what I would consider to be a world power. All of that uh, notoriety, popularity, and power, Gandhi, gone. And, uh, and, uh, and all of that was temporary. He made the right decision. But today, 2016, we're still talking about Moses and the right decision that he made. And he, didn't, he made the decision by faith to trust in God and what he was able to accomplish by delivering the slaves in Egypt and establishing uh, Israel and establishing God's people uh, lives on even to this day where a whole nation indeed does look to him as a, a, a wonderful man that was led by God by faith. And so we uh, esteem him today for making the right uh, decision. And he did that because he stepped away and he looked at the long term. Faith does lead to reward. Can I tell you this also? Just the final point today is that faith always leads as well to action. Uh, faith leads to action. You see, it's not enough for Moses to say, fine, I'm going to be a Hebrew. I'm even going to stick up for this Hebrew and then had to run into the wilderness. You know the story. Um, it's not enough for him just to say, well, I choose God. Whenever we choose God, it always will then lead to an action. By faith, we must then act upon this thing. God calls us, you believe in me? Great. I've got something, I got some stuff for you to do. And so you have to step out by faith. We believe that salvation comes through faith and faith alone. That's wonderful. But after you've believed by faith and you've, uh, you've got the Holy Spirit living within you and heaven is going to be at your home uh, when you die and you, you have this relationship with him. Oh, that's all wonderful. But listen, your faith le is leading you to then become an agent for the Lord, to do things for the Lord. And that's what happened with Moses. You see, by faith, he said, Moses, uh, do you believe in me? Yes, Lord, I believe in you. Then uh, I'm about to have the last plague, and I want you to put the blood on the doorpost, and I want you to kill a lamb, and I want you to uh, eat uh, the, the sacrificial lamb, and I want you to have the unleavened bread, and I want you to do these things. It's all symbolic uh, about, uh, actually, all of that was symbolic of the future lamb of God, Jesus Christ coming. But uh, for the day, he said, I want you to do that. And if, there, and if there is no blood on the doorpost of your house, then the firstborn child in your household will die. The Bible says that because of his faith in God, has that ever been done before? No, we've never had a Passover. And by the way, the death angel would come if he would see the blood on the doorpost of the household, he would pass over that house because that house had faith that God was uh, true. God gave the instruction. You have the door, doorpost with the blood on there. He would pass over that. And, he, and uh, he went to all the Egyptians. The firstborn in all of the Egyptian households uh, all died, uh, the Bible says. And so, uh, but it, in, in Moses' household, did anyone die? No, because he kept the Passover. Had it ever been done? Is this a new... Uh, uh, is this a new idea? Absolutely. He'd never heard of anything like that before. But by faith, he just said, hey, you, I'll get the lamb. I'll do the blood thing. I'll, I'll eat the unleavened bread. Uh, I'll do all of these things because you want me to do it. See, that's what it says in verse number 28. It's through faith, actions follow. Through faith, Moses kept the first Passover the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. It took faith for him to do that. But after you have faith that this is actually going to happen, he calls you to action, to do something. Moses, you're out in the middle of the desert. Pharaoh's army's coming, and you can see the dust from their chariots, and they're coming to get you, and you have the Red Sea in front of you. Do you believe that I can let you go across the Red Sea? I'm going to hold back the Red Sea uh, 
Do you believe that if you get out there, I'm not going to kill you? Uh, do you believe that you can cross that Red Sea? Yes, I believe. Great. Then do it. Verse 20 and 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Right? Remember that? Do you believe? Yes. Then get, get to moving. Get out in the middle of that river. And it uh, doesn't matter how scary it is. You see the fish like a big, two big fish tanks on the side, you know. Uh, and uh, just walk across on dry land and so that you can escape. Do you believe? Yes, I do. Then get to, then act. Verse number 30. Finally crossing over into the, um, the promised land. Moses had just retired and now Joshua's turn. But the children of Israel, uh, the Hebrews, were called to believe as well. And the Bible says, do you believe that I can conquer this first city in the promised land? Yes, I believe. Then I'd like for you to walk around uh, one time every day. And then on the last day, I want you to walk around seven times. Why are we doing this? I don't know why we're doing this. I, I guess uh, I, I'm not sure why we're doing this. But do you believe? Yes, I believe. So then let's just do it. It calls us to action, to do things even though I don't understand. I'm sure that when, when uh, Moses did the first Passover and he's, can you just imagine, you know, he's dipping, I don't know if they had a paintbrush or a horse hair or what they had, but uh, he dipped it in blood and then he's f flicking it onto the doorpost. Why am I doing this? I'm sure his wife came up, why are you doing this? I don't know. I was told to do it. I believe I'm just doing it. Do it whether or not you understand it or not. Do it whether or not it's scary or not. Do it whether or not you uh, uh, understand it or not. Just do it. Because faith always leads to action. Listen, if you have faith and trust in Christ this morning, I guarantee you he's going to ask you to do things that sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes it's scary to do that. And sometimes you're going to be going, oh, boy, I don't know. The question is, do you believe? And if you do believe, it always leads to action. And so let's, if we really do believe, let's stand up as Christians. Let's get going and become agents of the Lord. Because this doesn't belong to me anymore. It belongs to Him. If you by faith have trusted Him to be your Lord and Savior, you need to let God say, tell the Lord, I believe you by faith and so I am your agent. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go because I believe in you by faith, that you have my life in your hands. What a better life to live. Is there sometimes cost? Yes, there is. Is there sometimes pain? Yes, there is. But the nice thing about those two things, very temporary, very temporary. When you get scared, just step back a couple paces and see where God's leading you. He'll lead you to be a better person. He'll lead you to be an instrument in the hands of God. And it'll be wonderful. And it all begins with the foundation of faith. Trust him. Trust and obey. Amen? Let's all stand if you would. Oh, Father in heaven, I do thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. And I thank you, Lord, for teaching us what faith really is. Thank you for teaching us through uh, the life of Moses. And so I pray, Lord, today that you'd help us to just have total faith in you and trust and to be able to step out and not worry about the immediate cost or the pain or anything like that. And occasionally we come to those crossroads. I pray that we would march on and just believe in you by faith, Father. Help us to have that kind of faith. Even though um, we don't know where it's going to lead, we do know that eventually our faith will lead you to uh, us to your presence. And we know that it is pleasing in your sight as we have our faith and trust placed in you. Help us to believe, help us, Father, to live by that, and help us to realize that uh, you may call us to action, to do something by faith. Help us, Lord, not to shrink from it, but help us instead, Father, to embrace it and to realize that my faith that will lead me to uh, places where I just have to trust in you. And uh, you've never left me down. You've never left me or forsaken me. You never let me down. And I thank you, Lord, for that. I pray, Lord, for these good folks that are here today, that as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I pray, Father, that we would place our faith and trust in you and just believe, no matter the cost, help us, Father, to uh, march on and realize that that's pleasing in your sight. And this is our prayer, that we might apply this to our life 
In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed today. Let's sing that song this morning. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. You can only do that if you do it by faith. And yes, sometimes it's hard, but step back and look at where he's leading you. Do you believe in heaven? Do you believe he's going someplace? Do you believe he'll take care of you? If the answer is yes, then just believe and just do it. Believe by faith. Be led by his hand. Let the word of God uh, lead you and direct you. And as you do, God will bless you for it. Sing it to the Lord today. All to Jesus I surrender. situation right now where you need to have faith in Jesus Christ, but I encourage you to step out by faith today and trust in him. He won't, he won't let you fall. Trust him by faith. I don't know what your situation is today. Are you having difficulties financially or at the job or with your marriage? Are you having difficulties with your health? Are you scared? Listen, believe in Christ by faith. Just trust in him. I know that your neighbors and uh, people of the world might scoff at you for something so simplistic, but this is where we, we get favor with God. This is where God leads us to great and mighty things. Do it by faith. Trust in him today. You'll never be sorry that you put your faith and trust in him. You'll never be sorry. Trust him today. Sing it today. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Thank you, Lord, for the day today, and I thank you for the gift of faith. Uh, it is our faith actually comes from you. You give it to us as we hear your word and as we surrender to it, you give us the faith to believe. And I pray, Lord, that we would trust you with all of our life, every part of it. Sometimes it's easy to believe by faith and sometimes it's harder. And I pray, Lord, that we would do it no matter what, whether it cost us, whether or not we experience pain, wherever it leads us, whatever action it might lead us to, I pray, Lord, that we would do it wholeheartedly for you. And so, Father, may you be pleased in our life as we begin to understand more and more what this idea of faith in you is. And I pray, Lord, that we'd embrace it in our heart and our life. And we'll thank you, Lord, for it. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this day. And I pray, Lord, you bless our night as uh, we meet together again this evening with uh, some good folks for a fellowship of dinner, a dinner fellowship, and, uh, and then uh, to uh, just a, a night of appreciation and thanksgiving uh, for those who've been a part of our church. And I pray, Lord, that if there's any here tonight uh, or today that would like to come tonight, I pray, Lord, that they would know that uh, we need them in the house of the Lord. We need them in the ministry of the gospel. We need them to uh, fill positions and to work for you and to believe by faith that uh, you can, they can be used of you. So I pray, Lord, that uh, you would bless our church. Help us, Lord, to stand on faith, stand by faith uh, for you and for your word. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Man, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that the uh, Lord would give you a great day. And if you'd like to be part of the uh, uh, Operation Christmas Child, uh, just wait around and we're, we're going to start uh, 
handing out boxes. Amen. God bless you all. You are dismissed.